they have to hold firmly to the teachings that they have. They have the teachings of the Bible and the biblical doctrines. So they were supposed to, I mean, uh, hold fast all those teachings. Okay, now we will go to the uh, point number E. Point number E, the promise of reward. The promise of reward from Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 through 28. Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 through 28. That is the promise of reward for Thyatira Church. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, when you're writing, let me uh, explain those things from that point. The first one is, okay, 26 to 28. Okay, yeah, we, we will read that portion also. 26 to 28. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will, I will give authority over the nations, and he will rule them with the rod of iron, as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself have received authority from my father, and I will give him the morning star. Okay, what is that? The mainly, it is written that the first one is authority over the nations is the first reward. Okay, authority over the nations okay uh, to whom it is given the authority over the nations is given to those who overcomes to those who overcomes and secondly to those who obey the commandments until the end to those who obey the commandments until the end so it is written here authority over the nations authority of the nations means we will have a kingdom and we will rule over the nations okay so we are going to get or the people, those who are overcoming the world and the people, those who are obeying the commandments of God until the end. I mean, they will be getting an authority, okay? The authority over the nations, okay? That means, that means we will have a kingdom and also uh, we will be ruling over the nations. So when we are going to rule the nations, when are we going to rule the nations? Okay, we will go to uh, John chapter 5, verses 22 and 27. John chapter 5, verses 22 and 27. So there we read about the authority of judgment is given in the hands of God. Okay? Uh, uh, the, the, the authority of judgment is given in the hands of God. We read that verses. John chapter 5, verses 22 and 27. Yes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Okay. So all the authority is given to, uh, the, the, the authority of judgment is given to the hands of Jesus. Hands of Jesus really. Okay. So And during the time of uh, uh, a millennial uh, time or rule, the real Christians and the followers of Jesus Christ also will be with Jesus. Okay. And uh, uh, we also will be given the authority to judge and rule the nations or uh, at the same time uh, the unbelievers those who were not uh, I mean caught up in the second coming of Jesus Christ that you know we are going to rule over those people that is the uh, that is the thing that it, which is mentioned here that we will get the authority to rule over the nations to rule over the nations okay in during the time of when we are going to do that during the time of millennial uh, kingdom okay millennial kingdom is for thousand years and uh, about that we will be uh, studying uh, more about that uh, in the in the upcoming days. Okay, so that is what we uh, here, see here. And the unbelievers will be ruling the unbelievers and the nations. I mean, those who are not caught up in the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so again, we can see that uh, this 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 is a quotation from Psalm number two, verses eight and nine. Okay, this is a, a quotation from Psalm number uh, two, verses eight and nine. We will read that verse. Ask of me and I will make your nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So the same thing is written here also that uh, we will be having the authority. Jesus will be having the authority and to judge the nations. And uh, we also will be uh, with Jesus Christ and having the same authority to rule over 
the, 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 the nations. Okay, now we will go to, I mean, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27, uh, I mean, says like this, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces as I also have received authority from my father. So, uh, especially in uh, chapter 2, verse 27, it says that, the rebellious people or the wicked people will be like the vessels of the potter, which is broken to pieces. Is, is that right? Okay. The wicked people or the rebellious people will be like vessels of the potter or broken to pieces. The piece of the broken pieces of the vessel. The, 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 the rebellious people will be like that. So when you compare with uh, Jeremiah chapter 19, uh, verse 11, Jeremiah chapter 19, Verse 11, it is very clear that what is going to happen for the rebellious people or the wicked people. Okay. Jeremiah 19, 11. And shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, so will I break the, this people and this city as no one breaks a potter's vessel, so that it can never be mended. Men shall bury it toppeth because there will be no place else to bury. Okay, so uh, to the church at Taitaira, God is giving a promise of reward. The promise of reward, the first one is the authority over the nations. I mean, uh, that is the first one, the authority over the nations. And the second one is the morning star. The morning star is the second reward which is promised for the Taitaira church. That is in the same verses, you know, the morning star is the second one, okay? So, uh, who is the who is the morning star? Uh, that means you know uh, the, the the promise of reward is uh, I mean uh, I mean morning star and the morning star is given for uh, I mean uh, Taitara Church, the people those who are uh, holding past their teaching and the people those who are overcoming. Okay, so uh, they are getting Jesus Himself. You know when you read uh, uh, Revelation chapter twenty-two verse sixteen, Revelation chapter twenty-two verse sixteen that says that. Jesus himself is the morning star for the people of God. Jesus himself is the morning star for the people of God. So that's the reason that, uh, I mean, it is written that the, the people, those who are overcoming the world, uh, they will be receiving uh, the, the authority over the nations and also the morning star. The morning star is Jesus Christ. So they will see Jesus and they will be with Jesus forever and ever. Amen. So that is the end of the studies about uh, the Taitera Church. Now, uh, now we will uh, go to the next church, the fifth one. The fifth church is Sardis, the church at Sardis. Amen. So uh, we will read, uh, let us read uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Yeah. Sardis church. The fifth one is Sardis church. Okay. Sardis. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, you have re reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard, keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have yet you have still names in Sardis, people who are who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in the white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in the white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess it, I will confess his name before the Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay. So these, I mean, uh, in these, uh, I mean, six verses, uh, God is giving uh, many things and many messages for the uh, church at Sardis. Church at Sardis, okay, these are the, I mean, things that we see. But uh, all of a sudden, we are not going entering into the, I mean, messages of the church, but uh, I mean, we will go to the point number A, the city where the church was located, the city where the church was located. The city where the church was located. Okay. 
uh, without knowing the background of the i mean uh, the, the the city it is it is very difficult to study about the uh, the church you know so always the church will be based on the on the on the background of the city so every every cities have its own specialities uh, and we have to know what are the specialities of that church or that city then only uh, we will be able to understand uh, what is what was the situation of that church also so now we will go to the uh, uh, to i mean we will go to the city where the church was located so the the city of sardis okay so we are studying about the city of sardis and uh, uh, you know lydia lydia was uh, one of the provinces of asia minor and sardis was the capital city of lydia okay lydia was one of the provinces of asia minor and sardis was the capital city of lydia and sardis was 30 miles far from thyatira city sardis was 30 miles far from thyatira city and i'll give you one picture of uh, uh, the ancient <coughs> city of sardis the ancient city of sardis yeah this is the image and this is the photo of uh, the ancient city of uh, uh, sardis and it is very clear that you will you will see something there that the speciality how it is builded and how, how it was located that city was located okay it is very clear in that picture so we will go to the next points you know uh, uh, studying about the city of sardis okay so this city was surrounded by many mountains okay city was surrounded by many mountains and uh, it was a twin city it was a twin city twin city means one uh, it was the uh, made of two cities the same sardis city is made up of two cities means uh, on a, on a hill uh, on a mountain uh, there was a small city and downward maybe in the in the valley there was a city so that's the reason it is known as the uh, twin city okay and the another speciality of this city was it was a wealthy city it was a wealthy city you know uh, especially the reasons for the wealth is uh, mentioned there there were two rivers in this city related to the city there were mainly two rivers okay the the river of hermus and the river of uh, pactolus the the river of hermus and the river of pactolus these were the two rivers which is uh, uh, included in the in the city of sardis mm -hmm. and another thing i told you uh, the city was wealthy city Uh, uh the reasons are this okay the reason is gold was available from the sand of these rivers gold was available from the sand of these rivers means you know whenever they dig the, the sand of that rivers you know they were getting the gold from the sand of the rivers from these two rivers and again the city was known as the most secured city and they thought that no other empire can capture this city you know it they were thinking that our city the city of sardis is very secured and uh, i mean and they were thinking that no other empire can capture the city nobody can attack them okay so the people of city people of that city were very much proud about the security and the self confidence but we have to know one thing the over confidence about the security led them to a great fall Okay, you will see how it was happening. You know, the people of that city they were proud of security. They were saying that again, no other empire or no other emperor can come inside the city of Sardis because it was built up in that way, in that way. So they were uh, always, I mean, uh, proud about the security and uh, they had a self confidence and over confidence, and that over confidence led them to a great fall. Okay, and they thought they are uh, secure and they have well. you know they they think that they we have wealth and we are secure and uh, i mean nobody can attack them and uh, unexpected something uh, when it happened to uh, happen for the city they were so amazed you know there are many things unexpectedly happen for the service city we are going to see that okay that is uh, you know uh, uh, one king you know uh, Gro groises okay uh groises was the king of lydian province uh croises okay croises 
uh, was the king of Lydian province. You know what happened in BC 549, BC 549, the Persian king Cyrus conquered the palace of Croesus and he became the king. Okay, let me tell you one thing that you know the Sardis people, uh, the people those who were in Sardis city, they were thinking that nobody can attack them and they are so safe and they are secure. Nobody can um, attack them and capture them. But something happened unexpectedly. That was the first thing was this in BC 549, uh, uh, King Cyrus, he was a Persian king. He conquered the palace of, I mean, Croesus and he became the king of that province, okay? And then after that in BC, 334 in BC 334 Alexander the Great became the emperor he captured the city and he became the emperor of that province BC 334 Alexander the Great then in BC 214 BC 214 Seleucid Antiochus Seleucid Antiochus conquered the city. Antiochus conquered the city. Then after that, in BC 133, BC 133, the city was captured by the Roman Emperor Tiberius. The Roman Emperor Tiberius. Then that city was under the territory of Roman Empire. So that was the, that was the, I mean, uh, I mean, gradually how that city or that province was attacked and how they were, I mean, defied, okay, destroyed. Okay? What happened in BC 133, the city was captured by Roman Emperor Tiberius, then it became under the territory of the Roman EMB. Okay, so that is the small explanation about the city of Sardis. And now we will go to the point number B, the establishment of Church of Sardis. The establishment of the church at service. <clears throat> um, about the establishment of the church at service, nothing is recorded or mentioned in the Bible. Uh, that is true, but it is believed that Apostle Paul. You know, while he was uh, visiting and ministering in Ephesus, he also visited and planted a church in Sardis. But it is nothing is written about the establishment of the church at Sardis and how the church at Sardis was uh, uh, planted or established. But it is believed that it was by Apostle Paul while he was visiting and ministering Ephesus, he also visited a Sardis and he planted a church in Sardis. Okay, now we will go to the, the explanation about the word Sardis and the other details. Okay. Uh, after knowing all these things, things only, we will be getting into the messages because uh, we have to know all those things, then only we will be able to understand what are the messages given for the church at Sardis. So the word Sardis has two meanings. The word Sardis has two meanings. The first meaning is reformation and the second meaning is remnant. The first meaning is reformation and the second meaning is remnant. Now, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 4, Revelation chapter 3 verse 4, we read something special there. You know, uh, what is that? Can you read that? Revelation chapter 3 verse 4. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments and they will walk with me in the white for they are worthy. Yeah. So what is that? But you have a few people or remnant in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. You have a few people or you have a remnant in the church at Sardis. They are not defiled their garments, the garments of righteousness. Okay, God, when a person is I mean, getting salvation, when a person is coming to Christ and accepting Jesus, 
as his or her personal savior god is giving a special garment for that person what is the first i mean what is the garment i mean bible says that it's a garment of righteousness it's a garment of righteousness that means it is not because of any of our merit that we become the believers or the christians but it is only because of the righteousness of god through the blood of jesus christ so that's the reason that we are receiving that garment of righteousness so in the in this church you know we see that there are only few people or there is a remnant there is a, there is a remnant uh, in sardis they have not defiled their garments okay so this word remnant or few people speaks about the reformation which happened in the time of sardis church okay so that's a, that's a meaning you know the, the sardis means uh, i mean a, a reformation and also remnant is there so you know the the, the remnant word Uh, or the, the the few people the word few people speaks always about the reformation which happened in the time of sir this church and you know, during the time of sir this church uh, there were many i mean reformation which happened we know in every church you know uh, there will be few people uh, are not mingled with or not ready to com- compromise with the uh, the world and worldly pleasures right you know in every churches in every era in every uh, time there will be few people only few people will be there they are not ready to mingle with the worldly things and they are not ready to compromise with the, the world and the worldly pleasures even in service also there is a remnant there is a remnant it was always standing they were always standing against the worldly and religious rituals and practices it is very important to understand that in every churches we have few people always standing firm Uh, against the uh, uh, satanic attack and they are standing against the worldly and religious rituals and practices right so that's what we understand from uh, the 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 church at sardis also there were a remnant and the church at i mean sardis also was having a few people those who were against the, the worldly things okay even in the history we have a description about how the reformation took place in the christian churches no when you go to the history uh, you will get to, you have many things to i mean no you know uh, let just me let uh, let me just uh, tell you something about the history how the reformation was happening uh, in the christian churches in the earlier time you know the reformation in the churches they should know all those things uh, you know as as you are a christian or as you are a follower of jesus christ we have to know something from the history then only uh, we will be able to i mean uh, firmly stand for the christ okay so that's the reason i'm giving some of the <coughs> information from the uh, from the history also okay you know the leaders uh, who labored to bring a reformation into the christian churches are there. there are many leaders there are many leaders those who were trying to bring the reformation inside the church now i told you many things about the, in the previous class about how uh, the christian churches were I mean, mingled with the 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 uh, Gentile people and the other uh, idol worship and all those things. Okay, so uh, let me tell you one thing: there should be a reformation in the, in every church. In history, also there were many people those who were leading or bringing the reformation in the Christian church. The first person is John Wycliffe. Okay, that is John Wycliffe. It was in thirteen thirty. Okay, thirteen thirty. when job john wickliff was the uh, reform i mean a reformer okay, he was the leader of the reformation and what he said he said every believer should have a bible and every sh- everyone should read bible and let everyone know the real truth of the bible we know that john wickliff who was that he was the bible translator okay so john wickliff what he did we already saw that okay he was doing something that he was getting the bible available for everyone okay yeah. during that time the uh, the the leaders and the ministers and the priests were saying that again, only the priests and the leaders are supposed to read the bible and they are supposed to keep a bible but he said okay john wickliff said no 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 it is not like that every believer should have a bible and everyone should read bible and let everyone know the real truth bible and the second person second leader was martin luther martin 
Martin Luther. This is available from the history. So you can, you can maybe Google and you will get it. Okay. So this is from the history. Martin Luther, that is in, uh, I mean, uh, 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 that is, the, the time is, I mean, 1483 to 1546. 1483 to 1546. So Martin Luther, I think, I believe that most of you were aware about uh, this man, Martin Luther, who was that man. And he was a, a wonderful reformer, reformer uh, of the Christian church. You know, he was a German priest. He was a German priest. And uh, he always focused on Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. What is that? You know that? What is the verse? The righteous shall live by faith. Yeah, it is there in the slide. The righteous shall live by faith. So Martin Luther was always focusing on that topic that the righteous shall live by, by faith. Okay? That means in those days, there was a teaching that the righteous or the believers are not only live by faith, but also by the works, by, but also by the charity work or other, I mean, uh, deeds. But he said, Martin Luther said, no, 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 it is not like that. When I'm reading the Bible, I can see that from Romans chapter 1 verse 17, that the believers and the righteous people shall live only by faith, not by the works, not by the deeds that they are doing, only by faith in Jesus Christ. And he believed and taught that forgiveness of our sin is possible by our faith. Forgiveness of our sin is possible by our faith in Jesus Christ and not by any deeds of the people. Okay? So he was fighting always against all the religious man-made beliefs and practices. Okay? So this man, Martin Luther, was always I mean, I mean, standing against and fighting against all the religious things, you know, the religious man-made beliefs. Now, still, we have many man-made beliefs in our religion, okay? So, this man was always standing against and fighting against all those beliefs and practices. And what he did was, he placed a sticker on which uh, it was written, 95 biblical truths. He placed a sticker on which it was written, 95 biblical truth, which is also known as the 95 Thesis. That means 95 Thesis means 95 biblical truths he wrote in a, in a paper and he was trying to stick on the wall of Wittenberg Church in Germany. He was trying to fix that, that document or that thesis on which it is written 95 biblical truths, the New Testament truths. Okay, and he was trying to place that, I mean, that thesis or that paper or that sticker uh, on the wall of the uh, Wittenberg Church in Germany. And uh, mainly three things he mentioned in that sticker, okay, in that thesis. Okay, uh, there are mainly three things mentioned. Uh, the first one is all believers are priests spiritually. All believers are priests spiritually. Okay. And secondly, the foundation of the Christian faith is Bible. The foundation of the Christian faith is Bible. The first one is all believers are priests spiritually. Literally, we are not priests, but he says that all believers are priests spiritually in a spiritual way. Second one, the foundation of the Christian faith is Bible, no other things. The Bible is the foundation of the Christian faith. That means no other tradition, no other things. Only the Bible is the Christian tradition. Then, thirdly, the righteousness is only by faith, not by deeds. The righteousness is only by faith, not by deeds. Okay, these are the teachings of, uh, main teachings of the 95 Theses by by Martin Luther. So he was a great reformer in the, in the Christian church in those days and he did many things and he was, I mean, preaching and he was teaching the people that these are the truth of the Bible and we have to stand for the truth of the Bible. Okay. And then the next person, the next two person was, I mean, uh, Zwingli. Okay. Zwingli was the next reformer of the 
uh, of the I mean Christianity. Uh, it was in the year of uh, 1484 through I mean 1531. Zwingli from 1484 to 1531. And the next person is John Calvin. John Calvin, his time was 1509 and 1562, 1563. Yeah, it is there in the slide. And the next person was John Knox. John Knox, 1515 through 1572, 1515 through 1572. And the other reformer was Roger Williams. Roger Williams, 1604 through 1684. 1604 through 1684. Okay, you know, still, even 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 today, we we see the, the continu continuation of that reformation, which took place through the reformers or the leaders of the reformation. Uh, we have to thank God for that, you know, uh, for the for the churches. Thank God for the churches, which gives more importance to the Bible and its real and plain teachings than the man-made worship systems and the traditions. You know, we have to thank God for all those churches. Those were, I mean. Those who are giving more importance for the real and the plain teachings of the Bible. We have the plain teachings of the Bible, and why should we uh, uh, trust in the other things like uh, the tradition or other, I mean, man made worship systems? Okay, there are many man made worship systems in many churches, but remember one thing we have to, I mean, give more importance for the biblical and real and plain teachings of the Bible. I mean, so that's what we read from the history that there were many leaders and the reformers and to, to bring the reformation into the churches of those days. Okay, now we will go to the uh, point number C. Point number C, uh, messages to the church at service. Messages to the church at service. Point number C, messages to the church service. That is from chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. When we study about the messages to the church service, point number A is weak points. The weak points of the service church. The weak points of the service church. That is from chapter 3, Verses 1 and 2. You will read that verse. Chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and straighten that remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of God. Okay. So we have to remember one thing especially that there is no appreciations given for this church. To the other churches, God was giving many appreciations for the people. Okay, But here, for this church at service, God is not giving any appreciation. Okay, But giving just mentioning about few people in service, church who have not defiled their garments. It is written there. Okay, there are few people, okay, they are not defiled their garments with the worldly things. Okay, so only that much is written there, but no other appreciation is given for the church. At, I mean, uh, service. Now, we will go to the, I mean, what are the weak points of that church? What are the weak points of that church? The first weak point is you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. You have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. 
So that is the first weak point about the church service. Okay. So here it is written the word name. The word name. Okay. You have a name. Inverted comma. Within inverted comma. You have a name or you have a reputation. Okay. That you are alive. That means they say that, okay, we are alive. We are active for the ministry. We are active for the for doing something for the for the name of the Lord. And they are proud about that. And they are saying we have a name. We have a name. Okay, the word name in Greek it is onoma. Onoma is the Greek word for name. And the word denomination comes from onoma. The word denomination comes from the word Greek word onoma. You know, usually some people are proud to say that we are from such a denomination. Now, often the denominations are the matter of reputation too. Right? Now, some people, you, you might have heard that, you know, uh, some people are saying, okay, I'm from that, uh, I mean, that denomination and I'm from this denomination. And they are proud to say that, uh, say about something about the denomination that which they belong to. Okay? We have to know one thing. The denominations are the matter of reputation. But remember one thing, denominations are nothing. Or the name is nothing. The name is nothing. Okay? So, but the, the reality is the, 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 the personal spiritual life of a person is the reality. Okay. So in, in every denominations, there will be some good people and bad people. Okay. So don't look into the, the denomination, but think about how the people are living and how the people are following the biblical truth of the Bible. Okay. So here we see in this portion the weak point of service church that they were. They have a name or they have a reputation that they are alive, but they are dead. God says that they are dead. That means they were spiritually dead and the cause of the spiritual death is sin. When the people are doing sin, when the people are doing something against the will of God, that means that person is spiritually dying. That person is spiritually dying. Okay. That is the meaning of that. Okay, You say that you have a name and you have a reputation and you are active always but in the sight of God you are dead. You are dead. So that is the first big point that which is mentioned about the church service. Now we will go to the second big point about the service church. <clears throat> The second weak point of the service church. That also is mentioned in the same verse, maybe verse 2. Yeah. What is that? Your deeds are not perfect in the sight of God. Your deeds are not perfect in the sight of God. You know why God was saying that? Is? Your deeds or your works are not Perfect in the sight of God. Because, because, you know, the church, the service church had many ministries. They had many activities. They had worship. They used to do the charity work. They had a reputation or a name in public. They had many things to boast about themselves. They had a tradition. Okay. But the Spirit of the Lord says your deeds are not completed or that doesn't have a perfection. So this is the second big point mentioned here about the church at service. What is that? Your deeds are not perfect in the sight of God. That means those people, the people or the believers of the church at service, they were always proud about and they were always saying something about their ministry and their activities and their worship and their charity work and everything in public in public 
But the main thing we have to understand is the thing which we do at the in, in the presence of God, when the Spirit of the Lord sees that, will the Spirit of the Lord will say that it is completed, or your work is perfection, have, have the perfection. But here to the church and service, God says that your work is not completed. You are doing everything imperfect. Okay, you are not perfect. In you know, if, when you read uh, Daniel chapter uh, 5, verse 27, can you read that verse? Daniel chapter 5, verse 27. To Cal, you have been weighed in the balances found wanting. Yeah, so in, in this verse, uh, God says to I mean, King Belshazzar, yeah, God says to uh, King uh, Belshazzar, what is that? You have been weighed on, on, on the scales of God and found deficient, right? God said to the king Belshazzar, you have been weighed on the scale of God and found deficient. So this is the same thing that God says to the church at church at service. Okay, church at service. Now, um, uh, they, you know, when you, when you think about the church at service, they were doing everything for their own fame and publicity, but that is not perfectly accepted in the sight of God. We have to be very careful about whatever or whenever we do something that should be perfectly for the for the glory of the name of the Lord. That is the message that we are getting from this portion. You know, these people, the, the, the people of the church, service church, they do everything for their own fame. They do everything for their own fame, for the publicity. But it is not needed for, for us, the people of God, you know, whenever we do something, let that be acceptable in the sight of God and let the glow, the, let the name of the I mean, God be glorified, not for our fame, not for our publicity, do everything for the name of the Lord and for the, I mean, the glory of the name of the Lord. Okay, so that's what we are getting from this portion and we will go to the uh, point number B, that is suggestion. <laughs> Point number B, suggestion from chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Point number C, oh, sorry, so, uh, point number B, suggestions from chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Can we read that for verses? Two Wake verses. up and strengthen what remains, and it is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Okay. So, uh, what, what, what were, uh, uh, I think uh, five things are there. Five, I mean, uh, suggestions are given for the church at, uh, I mean, uh, service from these two verses. Number one, the first suggestion is wake up, wake up from where, from the sleep. Okay, so that was the that was the message given to them that you have to wake up from the situation of sleeping. Okay, that's what we read in uh, First Peter chapter five, verse eight. The reason that you have to wake up. Otherwise, what is going to happen? It is written in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Shall we read that verse? Yeah. Five be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adver adversary and devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Your adversary is roaring again, okay? To, to uh, what is that, you know? Uh, just like a roaring lion. Okay, so that's what we read in uh, uh, this. You know, if you are not wake up, okay, if you are not, I mean, waking up, then uh, from the from the sleep, so something is going to happen for you. That's the first suggestion. Okay, so wake. Up. The second one is strengthen, right? Strengthen. What to strengthen? The things that remain, which is about to die. No, in Malayalam it is written, Chavaraya Sheshipugale Shakti Girikya. Unnamathada Unarudu Golga. Strengthen the things that remain, which is about to die. Okay? 
it is about to die. Okay, maybe after a few minutes or after a few, uh, few hours or after a few years, that is going to be dying. But this is the right time to strengthen, wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which is about to die. This is the right time. Okay, third one. The third uh, suggestion is remember. Remember. What to remember? What to remember? What you have received and heard. Okay, remember what you have received and heard means you have the biblical doctrines with you, you have the real teachings of the Bible with you, and just remember those things. Remember those things. Whenever you are going away from the presence of God, just remember what you have received and what you have heard even before this. Okay, and the fourth one, fourth suggestion is keep it. Keep it. What to keep? That means keep it that not only listening, that means what? Keep, keep it means obey. That means not only listening or remembering, but to obey. Okay? Always the people are doing something that, you know, they are listening. You know, even in our, in our Bible studies also, in our Sunday service also, people are just listening. The messages and the Bible studies. Listening, listening, listening. Okay? Or uh, just remembering all those. Okay? Pastor was preaching that uh, point and this uh, theme, this topic in the previous Sunday, you remember something and you listen everything. But is that that we are obeying that word or we are ready to keep that? Are we ready to follow that? That's the main thing. That's why in James chapter 1 verse 22, read James chapter 1 verse 22. Yeah. Having pur purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brother, brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Yes. Okay. So obeying the word of God is most important thing. Okay. Not only listening or not only reading, but obeying. That's what we uh, we were discussing from the chapter one itself. You know, uh, you are blessed. You are blessed when you are reading. Okay. You are blessed when you are hearing. Okay. When you are listening. At the same time, you are blessed when you are obeying the word of God. Okay. And the fifth suggestion is repent. Repent. Repent about what? About your weakness and your deadness and the sins. Repent from the weakness, deadness and the sins of the people. So these are the five suggestions given for the church at service. Okay. First one is wake up. Second one is strengthen. Third one is remember. Fourth one is Keep it, and the fifth one is repent. Now we will go to the point number C, that is warning for the warning for the service church from chapter three, verse three. Chapter three, verse three, warning. What is that? It is very clearly written that if you do not wake up. If you do not wake up, Jesus will come like a thief. Jesus will come like a thief. That means he will come in, in an unexpected time. Like a thief means Jesus will come in an unexpected time. What is going to happen? The warning is, and you will be left off. If you are not, if you are not ready to wake up, and if you are not ready to return back to God, from your backsliding, okay, you will be left off. So that is the warning which is given for the church service. So it is applicable for the eternal life church of God also that Jesus is coming soon. And I mean, he says that, Jesus says that, if you are not, wake up, okay, Jesus is coming. Just like a thief, that means in the unexpected time. Okay, so let us also get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I will finish the I mean, uh, point number D also, then we will I mean, pray. Okay, so point number D, that is the, the promise of reward. The promise of reward from chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. You read that four verses, chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Yes, that's the Chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. 
Revelation? Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, in white for they are worthy. And the one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Yes. I mean, three, three rewards are there. Three promises are given for the church at Sardis. And the promise of reward is given for the few people. Only for the few people or only for the remnant. Okay. Those who are keeping themselves according to the word of God. Okay. Who have not defiled their garments and those overcome. Okay, that's what we read there. Okay, so overcoming means overcoming what? Overcoming the world. That's what we read in First John chapter five, verse five or so. Okay? Overcoming the world. Okay, they are called as worthy to receive many things. Only the people those are overcoming the world will be worthy. It is written there. Okay, those people are worthy. Those people are worthy to receive many things. What are those things? The first thing is, they will receive the people, those who are keeping themselves according to the word of God. The people, uh, those who have not defiled their garments, and the people, those who are overcoming, they will receive many things from the Lord. Right? Mainly three things are there written. The number one, the first one is, they will be clothed in white garments. They will be clothed in white garments. Okay? Because, you know, the white garments is a symbol of victory and purity. The white garment is a symbol of victory and purity. You know, the Roman government used to give a white garment for those who win in the battle and the game in ancient times. So, so that's the reason that, I mean, it is written that the people those were overcoming, the people are the people those were getting the victory or winning, they will get the cloth with a white garment. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, number two. Number two is God will not erase their names from the book of life. God will not erase their names from the book of life. That we know that we have in heaven, we have a book of life and our names are written there. When we are getting saved, our names are written in that book and God will not erase their names from the book of life. And the third what third promise, third reward is Jesus will confess his name before Father God and before the angels. Jesus will confess our name before Father God and before the angels. Why? Why? We are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and we became the, the children of God. So that's the reason, main reason that Jesus says that, okay, I will, I mean, I will uh, what is that, you know, uh, I will uh, give you or, or confess your name. I will confess your name. I mean, uh, with uh, uh, the Father God and also in front of the, I mean, angels. Okay. So that's what we read here. So let us all, I mean, uh, commit us with the mighty hand of God, according to the word of God that we were uh, listening. You know, uh, I will be giving maybe uh, five or 10 minutes for uh, all of you. If you have any questions or if you have any uh, I mean, uh, matter to discuss. I mean, we'll be discussing about those things. At the same time, now shall we all look into the Lord in prayer and especially let's pray for our dear Jeffrey.